It's Monday, it's the last day of August. We're 34 weeks pregnant today. Henry's the size of a pineapple. Jessica and I are getting ready to go to the ultrasound place to get our 34 week check done. It's a growth ultrasound and today is particularly important for me because I get to see Henry via ultrasound for the first time in six months. about eight ultrasounds total. I've missed the last five due to corona wreaking havoc on Washington, uh, but not today. Today, the tides turn. So we have to go to these growth ultrasounds due to a couple issues that I'll talk about later on, um, but we're excited to see Henry. I got yelled at just a little bit for trying to film in the exam room, but Henry measured in at, what was it, five and a half pounds? With six weeks to go. He's gonna be a big kid. Um, so we got a clean bill of health, we're excited about that. And now we're gonna go get a slice and we'll head home. Yeah. Cause we're hungry. Cause we're hungry. came downtown, I wanted to listen to some music and just clear my head a bit. And I thought this would be a good opportunity for the next segment of the video. And that's called COVID Rent. So Jessica's and my story actually starts May 2019 BC. Before I get into the COVID related stuff, I wanna give you a brief history, which will help explain why I'm so concerned and frustrated with the reaction of the medical community in King County, Washington related to COVID. Jessica and I have been trying to get pregnant for three months and one day we took a pregnancy test and it was positive. We were so happy, we were looking forward to the future and when we went to the doctor to confirm the pregnancy, our world was torn apart. We found out Jessica had a molar pregnancy. It affects one in 1,000 women and it is essentially your cells and hormones growing at such a rapid rate, it's almost like cancer. It's very dangerous and unfortunately it needs to be dealt with as soon as possible. That day is such a blur. So obviously we were, we were hurt. Um, I personally have never been so heartbroken and still to this day, it's still fresh. The doctor had told us that there was a chance that Jessica would need to go into emergency surgery. I ended up getting a call early that Saturday morning from the doctor that said we needed to rush into the emergency room and that she was indeed going into surgery. It's the hardest thing that we've ever gone through, individually and as a couple. We did what we needed to do to keep Jessica safe. Uh, the next six months involved her getting her blood drawn multiple times a month to ensure that her HCG levels were going down appropriately. And and the healing began. <laughs> All right, so let's make it lighter. Fast forwarding to February of 2020, I get a call one night from my sister Lindsay and her husband Jerry, and they inform me that I'm gonna be an uncle. They're expecting their first child. I'm so happy and excited for them. I can't explain it. I love you guys but inevitably the emotions and the memories of our past came rolling back in. And that was, that was a hard night, to be honest. We were on month two of trying again to have our own kid. 
uh, we decided to take a pregnancy test the next day and it was positive. That's where I'd like to start with a comparison between North Carolina and Washington when it comes to pregnancy during COVID. I talked to my brother-in-law today and he told me that aside from the obvious concern of exposure and what that could do to a baby and having to wear masks, socially distance, and my sister being a nurse in a hospital, their experience has been relatively normal when it comes to the flow of appointments. And uh, North Carolina seemed to allow more for longer. And I'm, I'm grateful that my brother-in-law was able to accompany my sister and support her in that way. In King County, it's almost the exact opposite. Aside from two appointments, I was basically shut out um, until this morning. Our first appointment after we found out we were pregnant was at six weeks, and it's the initial confirmation to make sure everything's normal and placed in the correct position. It was very important that I be at that appointment based on our history to support Jessica, and everything was normal. It was a happy day but not too happy. The next appointment was at nine weeks. We got to meet our OB. We got to hear the heartbeat. And again, we heard everything was normal. And then good old Corona hit and Washington shut down. At 13 weeks, we scheduled the NT appointment, which measures the thickness of the fluid in the back of your neck. It can relate to Down syndrome. Everything came back normal. That was my first experience of not being let into the room. And it did not go well. I didn't know about it beforehand. I was very excited to get to see the baby again. And I was stopped at the door. I was told, you need to wait in the hallway. We're not allowing fathers in. And it was a shock. Admittedly, I made a scene in the waiting room in front of all the people yelling, asking for managers. I think there might have been a little cussing involved. I'm lucky I didn't get security called on me. I looked down at Jessica and she's looking back up at me just making the biggest fool of myself and I've, I've never been that embarrassed. But it was an act of desperation. I thought I needed to be in there to support my wife and I didn't understand why I couldn't. At 20 weeks, we scheduled our anatomy scan. And again, I was not allowed in the room. This is the scan where they check for two arms, two legs, 10 fingers, 10 toes, two eyes, all the body parts. And they can check for the sex of the baby. I believe that Corona played a huge part in dictating the doctor's choice not to come into the room to explain the scan results to us before we were sent home. We were sent home with a printout with some scary words and our phones to look them up on Google. And that's never a good idea. sitting in a red ant bed. Awesome. Words like aneuploidy, single umbilical artery, and pelvic kidney. When those three things show up on a scan collectively, it can point to chromosomal problems. Memorial Day weekend. So it was a long weekend and we weren't able to talk to anyone about it until that Tuesday after the Friday appointment. That weekend also happened to be our gender reveal. We found out the sex, they wrote it on a card for us. We went home, uh, we told our friends Carolyn and Brad about it and they set up this golf ball filled with powder that I hit horribly by the way. It was a fun time, but the weekend was clouded again in fear and anxiety. We called our OB on that Tuesday and she reassured us that nothing is certain, not to jump to any conclusions, and we'll come in and get tested for the, for the big three uh, chromosomal problems, which is trisomy 13, 18, and 21. 21 being Down syndrome, 13 and 18, look it up. So currently, this morning was a growth ultrasound, and it was for the single umbilical artery, which can affect the baby's growth. The baby is in the 65th percentile of babies, which is super average, and that's what we want. I really hope that you never have to go through any of this, 
but it's really important to understand that not every pregnancy is perfect. I couldn't get truly excited about having a baby until about 24 weeks or so, when everything had kind of developed and even still, my mind goes there all the time. And it's, it's still fresh and honestly, I don't know if it'll ever go away. The experience of having my first child has been a stressful one, but now I'm fully optimistic in the future. I'm looking forward to meeting my son and one day I'm gonna tell him about this crazy year. I'll be able to give an update to this video after we give birth, after my sister and Jerry give birth in North Carolina, we can compare and see what the differences were. Nephew's coming in three weeks. My son's coming in six. I know this video is heavy. I really just wanted y'all to understand where I'm coming from. I didn't want to get on here complaining and you not know why. No one said having a baby's easy and all you're ever gonna get is honesty from me and I hope you can appreciate that. So if you're into it, like the video if you do, subscribe if you haven't, have a great night. You see us as you want to see us. In the simplest terms, the most convenient definitions. But what we found out is that each one of us is a brain and an athlete and a basket case, a princess and a criminal. Does that answer your question? Sincerely yours, The Breakfast Club. Don't